Hi, I'm Matt Griffith. I hold a commercial pilot's license with multi-engine and instrument ratings. But we're not going to talk about how I get around that way. We're going to talk about how I book flights and all the different booking engines that I use to find them uh, to go to, say, Europe, to and maybe even in some place in the United States or South America or the Caribbean. And we're also going to cover how I even use air miles to go places for free where I just have to pay a little bit in taxes, um, even first class. And I'm going to show you all the steps that I do that in, so I hope you're looking forward to this. I prefer to search for flights on a desktop computer, and ideally a computer with two monitors, but you can easily do this on a single monitor. Oh, hey! Oh, well, you get to see my office and my inner nerd. This is one of my favorite websites to begin my flight searches. It is called Matrix, and it is by ITA Software, which Google bought several years ago. This site allows for very complex searches and makes them easy to do. The one thing you need to note is this site merely gives you the airline, flight numbers, and pricing. You cannot book your flight from this site. But once you find the flight you like, either based on price, duration, departure and arrival times, or a combination of those, you can now take that information and go find the same set of flights from Expedia or even the airline's own website. There are advantages of booking direct with the airline too. Many airlines don't allow the online sites such as Expedia, Kayak, and others to have access to their full inventory of seats, giving them the lesser desired seats. You know, the middle seats and the ones toward the back of the plane and even the ones next to the bathroom. When you book directly through the airline, you typically have access to more window and aisle seats as well as seats closer to the front of the plane. Let's do a search from my home airport in Greensboro, North Carolina to Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris, France. I prefer to not use exact dates as you can find better prices if you're not stuck to certain days. However, I know it's not always possible to do this, especially if you have kids in school or you're just simply stuck to a schedule. I'm going to select See Calendar of Lowest Fares and I just have to put in a date here and it will show me prices for this day as well as the 30 days following it. Today is July 8th, so I'll pick August the 12th. One of the great features of this site is it will let you pick a range of nights instead of a single number. Maybe you were thinking of seven nights, but didn't care if it were a couple of days less or a couple more days. So I'll put in five to nine. As you can see here, we have other options such as cabin, the number of stops, whether I'm willing to change airports, for example, fly into New York's LaGuardia and depart from JFK, which would require a taxi, Uber, or other form of transportation to get from one to the other, and the currency. The currency defaults to the departing airport. I have used this to book a flight from Bogota, Colombia back to the US and if I didn't put in the ISO three character currency code USD as the currency, it would default to Colombian pesos, which would be an astronomical number and freak you out a little bit. Let's click search. Depending on how complex your search is, it can take up to a minute for the results. So have some patience. The cheapest price is shown for each day on the calendar. Because I put in a range of nights to stay, as you mouse over the days, a pop-up will show the prices for each of those options. Clicking the number of nights will show you the airline and flight options for those number of nights. You expand the details on any set of flights to see the individual flights as well as layover. This screen will let you sort by departure, arrival, duration, and more, but it will also let you filter all of these headings as well. Because all of these flights are showing a connection in Charlotte, I'm going to redo the search to see if it will save me money to drive one and a half hours to Charlotte and leave my car in long-term parking.
As you can see, my flights dropped from $1,479 to $1,180 by doing this, but these still aren't direct flights either. But I can save $300 by doing this. You figure $8 per day for long-term parking plus $20 worth of gasoline changes this savings to about $215. Now I would just have to figure out if it's worth my time to do the drive. As you can see, the non-stop flights start at $1,333. So now I'm only trimming a few hours off of my flight and airport wait times. Now I want to show you how you can do multiple airport searches. For me, Greensboro is my home airport, but one and a half hours to the east is Raleigh and one and a half hours to the south is Charlotte. I can put all three airport codes in here separated by commas to search all three. You would be amazed what kind of deals you'll find sometimes by doing this. Now one thing to note on doing this, while it didn't happen on these particular results, I have on numerous occasions had it to return results where I would depart from one of those airports and arrive home at one of the other airports. So if you've left a car, you'll want to make sure your arrival airport is the same as your departing airport. A friend of mine who happens to be one of our parent company's stakeholders is a pilot for United Airlines. He lives in Greensboro and has told me when he's coming home from work, he'll sometimes fly to Raleigh and get an Uber ride home for around $90. He says it's nice because he doesn't pay for parking, his car doesn't get dinged in the parking lot, and he can chill out in the back seat or even sleep on the way home. So you can also do multiple airport searches for your destination too. In this example, maybe you're interested in Paris, Cologne, or Berlin. You don't care which one you go to, you just know you want to go to one. This will let you see which city is the cheapest to get to. What I was talking about earlier where your departing and arriving airports could be different when doing multiple airport codes, well it happened on the destination. So some of these have us arriving in Frankfurt and departing from Cologne. I can open up the from to filter and uncheck the airports that I don't want to use to correct this now that I know that this could be the destination I'm interested in. I can also open up the duration filter and tweak the flight durations back to show only shorter flights and layovers. Now let's add Munich to the airport codes. Now I'm getting some inexpensive direct flights. I'll remove Cologne and Frankfurt from these. This United flight appears to be the best one. One thing to note is your arrival time at your destination. Most flights from the US to Europe arrive early in the morning, many as early as 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. and I'll be honest with you, those are my preferred times. If you arrive at 11 a.m. or even noon, by the time you go through passport control, baggage claim, and customs, then get transportation to your hotel or Airbnb, it's now mid-afternoon and you've lost any opportunity to do anything other than sightsee a little and have a meal. Because most of Europe is six to nine hours ahead of the United States, depending on whether you're east or west coast, it's imperative that you get some sleep on the airplane. For some, including myself, that is difficult to do sitting upright. I try to fly first or business class on the way to Europe, and I do that with air miles, and I'll show you how I book those in a few minutes. I am cheap. I am not going to pay for a first or business class seat. But first I want to show you a little trick that I often use. I will fly into one city and depart out of another, on purpose of course. This is so I can experience two destinations on the same trip. Let's search for Charlotte to Paris, then Munich to Charlotte to return home. Don't worry about how we're going to get from Paris to Munich, I'll show you that next. I'll pick October 14th through the 23rd. Now as you enter things on this form, it may try to auto-correct something like it did here on me, which is common. I'll correct it to the way I want it, and voila! You have two destinations for less than it was going to cost to go to just one. Most of the time they're about the same price. I'll adjust the filters on the duration. This looks like an excellent flight. Now let's go find our flight from Paris to Munich. I'll use Skyscanner or Momondo for this. 
Skyscanner and Mimondo are excellent for finding airfare for the low-cost carriers such as EasyJet and Ryanair, but they still have all of the major standard airlines too. Let's pick October 19th so we have plenty of time in Paris. Remember, when departing from the U.S. to Europe, you leave one day and arrive on the next, so you'll need to take that into account when planning your days out. So you can see we have a direct non-stop flight for $85 on Air France. There's typically plenty of flights to choose from at all different times. This one is early in the morning because I want to be able to have the full day to see the city and attractions. Now I want to show you one more feature that Skyscanner has. Suppose you don't know where you want to go, but you just want to go somewhere. You can put your departing airport in their search and choose everywhere in the destination. Then click the map link and it will reveal a map of the world with estimated prices popping up for the various destinations. You'll notice not every dot has a price above it, but if you mouse over each one it will still reveal the price. There's nothing wrong with the red dots. The only difference between green dots and red dots are that the green dots are direct flights and the red ones have connections. You can drag this map around to see other parts of the world. You can filter the pricing back so that it hides everything that is higher than your budget, revealing the real bargains. Once you pick a place, you can select how many nights and the day and get current pricing. Keep in mind that the quantity of nights and the day you depart can affect this price negatively or positively. So from this search, you can see that we were able to find a direct flight from Charlotte to Barcelona for $608. If we click it, we'll be taken to a list of websites where we can book this flight. These will likely feature travel companies you've never heard of. In this case, Travel Mary is the website that has this price. I'm in this business and I haven't heard of them. But don't fear, Skyscanner has vetted them. I've booked numerous flights this way and never had a problem. Also keep in mind that your credit card company will protect you from fraudulent purchases. So know that this is completely safe. Mimondo also has some features for finding destination ideas. Google bought ITA software for their flight technology, but they're focusing on Google Flights, which is decent, but I still like Matrix better. Google Flights will let you use multiple airport codes, and on a side note, so will Skyscanner and Mimondo. In this search, I will search for Greensboro, Charlotte, and Raleigh to Paris. Here they do a good job of showing pricing on their calendar date picker, but a 25-hour set of return flights is not my cup of tea. Google also can show a map of prices similar to Skyscanner, but again, I like Skyscanner's implementation better. A lot of Google's filters are very similar to the ones found on Matrix, but Matrix still offers more customization over those filters. There's no question though that Google's style is more polished and current feeling. But that's to be expected. Matrix hasn't been updated in years. Now I want to show you how I book with Air Miles. If you don't have Air Miles accounts with the airlines you use, you should immediately sign up for this on each airline you fly with. We will have another Travel Hacks episode for points and miles coming up where we will show you how to use and accumulate points and miles and even quickly get enough to get a free flight somewhere. Normally when you book a flight on most airlines, a round trip ticket is less than double of a one-way ticket. However, when booking with miles, that is not the case. Round trip bookings are always double of a one-way booking. For that reason, whenever I book using miles, I always book one way. It gives me more options on my return flight as I do actually prefer to do more than one destination when I'm traveling. In this example, I will show you American, Delta, and United. I'll do the same Greensboro to Paris search on all three airline websites so you can get a full comparison. 
If I'm given the option of time of day for departure, I always change that to all day because I want to see all of the results so I can make a decision based on cost and duration. I'm also looking for mile savers. As you can see, this flight with American Airlines would require 30,000 miles and $5.60 in taxes. That same flight with Delta requires 78,000 miles plus the taxes, and United is 30,000 miles plus the taxes. Now this is where I book first class or business class. In the case of business class seats that fold flat to go to Europe, American Airlines would require 57,500 miles plus taxes, whereas Delta requires 185,000 miles and United at 60,000 miles. As you can see, American and United are about the same, but for some crazy reason, Delta requires double the miles. When flying long distance flights, say six or seven hours or longer, I often book a first class or business class seat, only if it has a seat that becomes a fold flat bed. But I never buy these flights as they are literally three to seven times the cost of economy and can be in the thousands of dollars and often more than $10,000. This is where booking with air miles is so beneficial because most of the time it only requires twice the miles of economy. First class and business class on long haul flights is typically very nice. The flight attendants are almost always the nicest for this cabin area and the food is most of the time something you would find in a nice restaurant. Typically your meal is on a real dinner plate and you get actual silverware to eat with. Unlike economy where you only have one or two options for meals, first and business class typically have five or more dinner options. If you order wine, it is poured from a full-size wine bottle in a wine glass and there are typically several wines to choose from. There are almost always multiple courses to your meal as well as ending in a dessert. The Independent, a UK newspaper, contacted me asking me if they could publish the details of a British Airways flight from London to Washington DC and you could see why they wanted to publish this as an article. On this particular flight, I was served a glass of Pinot Noir and candied nuts, then a small salad, then sesame crusted tuna as an appetizer, then sea bass with asparagus and hollandaise sauce, then a berry crumble and cream dessert, and finally later in the flight, some tea and a mini dessert sampler. You have to have British tea on a flight from London, right? This flight only cost me the taxes, which were about what the dinner would have cost in a restaurant. But this flight also included the previous flight from Frankfurt where I had an English breakfast and I enjoyed first class lounges as well. And while we're talking about first class airport lounges, there are a few credit cards that give you a free priority pass card, which gives you free access to lounges across the world. These lounges always have more comfortable chairs than what everyone else is sitting in by the gates and always plenty of outlets to charge your devices. But they also have free snacks and non-alcoholic beverages and I'd say that 95% of them have free alcoholic beverages as well. There are quite many that also have free food. Some have chairs that recline so you can rest and even showers. I've even ran into one called Minute Suites in both Charlotte and Atlanta that have private rooms with your own sofa that is actually a bed and they give you a pillow and bedding. There's also your own TV and mini fridge, but any snacks or drinks taken do cost here. But this is a great place to relieve some fatigue from traveling. And there are even some airports, Miami International for instance, where you get a $30 credit at a restaurant. In the case of Miami, Margaritaville and Corona Beach Club are some of the offerings. The great thing about this card is it gets anyone you're traveling with access to the lounges as well, although this varies on how many. But most of the time it will let you get up to four fellow travelers in. Occasionally there might be a restaurant or lounge that only allows you one or two additional guests, but it's rare. This Priority Pass card is worth its weight in gold to me. I love this card and it didn't cost me a dime. That's right, it was totally free. It came with my Chase Sapphire Reserve card. This card is in my opinion the best card for travel. We'll talk more about it in a future episode on points and miles. One product I love as a traveler is a tile. This is actually a tracking device. You can put them on your keys, things like that. One thing you can do is uh, if you want to be sneaky, um, you can actually put them in your kid's car and then you can find out if they actually are where they say they're going to be. But as a traveler, I put them in every bag that I have and I hide them in the bag. So that's one thing you want to make sure you do is you want to make sure that you, it's very difficult for to be found, 
because if your bag is ever stolen, you can actually find it because the person doesn't find the tile and throw it out. You get to see my messy bag, but it's kind of imperative because I want to show you a great place to hide this in a suitcase. A thief is never going to think to look in the liner. So uh, about every suitcase allows you to unzip the liner and it just reveals the hard shell of the case. But you place the uh, tile in there and zip it back up, voila, nobody will ever know it's there. Uh, but these also let you know if your bag made it on the airplane, if your bag's coming out of baggage claim, um, if it went to another city, you can actually figure out where it is. Uh, so these are just an amazing thing. And one thing to note, they're not paying me to say this. I wish they were, but they're not. Uh, I just really love the device. So I'm at the airport and I can tell when my bag is actually here coming up on the belt. Uh, I go to my tile app and I hit this and it shows that it's nearby. So I know it made it here. And yes, I am sunburnt here, which is a reminder to everyone that you not only have to bring your sunscreen, but you have to remember to put it on. One more thing to note is the batteries on these tiles last roughly about a year. They used to be disposable, but the new ones now have a user changeable battery. So it makes it really cost effective to basically uh, change the battery out every year. But kind of keep that in mind that, and your app will also tell you when the battery is starting to get low. But keep that in mind that you want to actually check these every year so that you don't have a tile that's not actually doing what it's supposed to do in your bag. Hello.